greetings everybody so today we are going to discuss about ideal and non-ideal solution we need to understand about a basic concept between ideal and non-ideal first we need to uh, discuss some details about types of solution the two basically types of solution whenever we study first is the ideal and second is the non-ideal ideal solution is a type of solution which is having its forces of interaction which is having its solute solvent forces of interaction equal to the solute solute and solvent solvent forces of interaction likewise if we talk about forces of interaction of the ideal solutions forces of interaction of ideal solutions before mixing or before miscibility is equal to forces of interaction between solute solute and solvent solvent after miscibility which means the forces of interaction between solute solute and solvent solvent before and after miscibility are not affected which means forces of interaction of solute solute and solvent solvent before miscibility and forces of attraction between solute solute and solvent solvent after miscibility are equal in ideal solution but in case of uh, non ideal solution the forces of attraction between solute solute and solvent solvent before and after miscibility are changed such that before miscibility these forces of attraction are in stronger and after miscibility these are weakened in that case now it depends on the type of reaction if there is an exothermic reaction occurring so in case of exothermic reaction these forces of interaction after the miscibility in case of an exothermic reaction these forces of interaction after the miscibility will be increased in case of an endothermic reaction these forces of interaction after the miscibility in case of an endothermic reaction will be decreased right now we are going to discuss that as well now here when, we, when it comes to forces of interaction before miscibility and after miscibility between solute solute and solvent solvent remain constant after that volume of solute volume of solute the, the volume of the solution is equal to the algebraic sum of volume of solute plus volume of solution volume of solute plus volume of sol solvent is equal to the volume of solution right and whenever we are dissolving ideal and non ideal solution so there is no change in enthalpy which means change in dissolution there is no dissolution occurring so change in enthalpy is equal to 0 delta h is equal to 0 delta h actually so as well as change in volume is also equal to 0 right and one more thing that here change in enthalpy change in volume is equal to 0 change in volume and change in enthalpy is uh, equal to 0 change in volume and change in enthalpy is equal to 0 which means there is no exothermic endothermic reaction occurring upon addition of the solute into the solvent and uh, one more thing that here uh, there is a particular law given by a French chemist Raoult which we are going to discuss in the next video Raoult's law and those solutions which obey that law are known as ideal solutions and those solutions which do not obey the Raoult's law are known as non-ideal solutions right those solutions which do not obey are known as non-ideal solutions one more thing that here uh, when it comes to uh, ideal solutions these ideal solutions are you know uh, also in terms of Raoult's condition we can also call these ideal solutions as isotropic mixtures when we will be discussing the Raoult's law then we are going to discuss that in detail isotropic mixtures and delta h is equal to 0 delta v is also equal to 0 no exothermic endothermic reaction is occurring as well as volume of solute plus volume of solvent is equal to volume of solution forces of interaction before miscibility and after miscibility are same and forces of interaction of solute solute is equal to solute solvent interaction is equals to solute solvent interaction likewise if we take it on the other end side on the non ideal solution part non ideal solution would be opposite of it such that forces of interaction before miscibility between solute solute and solvent solvent and after miscibility between solute solute and solvent solvent will be either decreased or increased how let's see before miscibility before miscibility either would be greater than after miscibility forces of interaction between solute solute and solvent solvent before miscibility greater than after miscibility or in other case we can also write it as we can also write it as 
less than before miscibility or after, after miscibility. Now in this case, what are these conditions signifying? If the forces of interaction before miscibility are greater than forces of interaction after miscibility, then at that moment, these forces of interaction will be occurring in case of an exothermic reaction, right? If we talk about forces of interaction before miscibility and after miscibility, the if the forces of interaction after miscibility are greater than forces of interaction before miscibility, then in this case the forces of interaction are forces of interaction sorry that would be uh, it's an opposite actually forces of interaction after miscibility would be greater than forces of interaction before miscibility then it would be considered under the category of exothermic reaction while forces of interaction before miscibility greater than after miscibility showcases that the forces of interaction after miscibility are weakened due to which there is weaken, weakening or uh, decrease in the strength of the intermolecular forces which means there would be occurring you know of the exothermic reaction over here while if the after miscibility is greater than before miscibility sorry it's again a problem it's endothermic reaction again endothermic reaction if the forces of interaction before miscibility are greater than forces of interaction after miscibility so in this case this interaction showcases that here the forces of interaction are weakened and as the forces of interaction are weakened that is considered under the category of endothermic reaction while if the forces of interaction before miscibility are less stronger than forces of interaction after miscibility it showcases us that the forces of interaction after miscibility are strengthened due to which it leads to an exothermic reaction now what is the actual mechanism behind it you're going to understand it so here again coming to a few points volume of solute plus volume of solvent not equal to volume of solution in case of uh, a non-ideal solution likewise if we talk about delta h then delta h it can be either positive or negative delta h either positive or negative and uh, as it is positive or negative we can consider delta h delta h either positive or negative if it is positive of course endothermic reaction if it is negative uh, exothermic reaction and uh, delta v is also changed delta v is also changed delta v is also changed right so delta v can be positive uh, delta v can be positive whenever there is delta v is positive when there is an increase in volume and delta v is negative when there is a decrease in volume so when delta v is positive it indicates that there is an increase in volume delta v is negative indicates there is a decrease in volume if delta v is positive positive then at that moment delta v being positive will indicate that there is occurring this occurrence of delta v being positive will showcase that there is occurring of an endothermic reaction now how does it actually occur now let's suppose if we take the periodic table right in the periodic table we are having the group 1a 2a elements which are considered as strong electrolytes and the rest of the transition elements which are considered as weak electrolytes these strong electrolytes are larger in size due to less number of protons they are having less nuclear force due to which their size is quite larger due to which their size being quite larger they have high amount of reactivity less amount of stability due to which these molecules being more reactive tend to perform an exothermic reaction most of the time while when it comes to transition elements these are weak electrolytes which are having high number of protons due to which because these are heavy metals so these are having large number of protons due to which they have high nuclear force due to which their size is quite smaller Dim atomic radii is smaller atomic size is quite smaller due to which their stability is high reactivity is low and reactivity being low will now cause them to undergo an endothermic reaction which means we need to provide them heat in order to conduct a reaction rather than uh, in case of exothermic reaction in which we are gaining heat from the particular compound right so here endothermic reaction would be occurring in case of weak electrolyte now these 
endothermic reaction when would be occurring in the weak electrolyte uh, whenever we are going to provide them heat let's suppose if there is a container and we are taking weak electrolyte let's suppose silver chloride silver chloride right silver chloride when it is dissolved in uh, let's suppose a solution of h2o uh, solvent is h2o right and when it is dissolved inside it then at that moment we need to provide it heat heat energy is required to be provided right so as we are going to provide it heat energy when the molecules of uh, silver chloride will gain will start to gain heat energy these molecules uh, after gaining the heat energy will have their intermolecular forces of interaction weakened intermolecular forces of interaction uh, will be weakened by the absorption of heat due to which they will be less stable and uh, because of the more amount of heat energy gained due to which their kinetic energy is increased due to which their heat energy is ultimately increased and that increase in kinetic energy leads to decrease their stability and increase their reactivity due to which they are now further uh, capable of uh, undergoing the state of a reaction and dissolve easily within the water so in this case this leads to uh, their increase in solubility within the water so in this case when the endothermic reaction occurs there is an increase in their reactivity due to which they are able to dissolve within h2o as a result of which when the intermolecular forces of interaction are weakened of at uh, silver chloride then water is also having its intermolecular forces of interaction weakened water's intermolecular forces of interaction are also weakened and as a result of weakening of the intermolecular forces of interaction of water the intermolecular gaps of water is increased due to which the volume of the h2o is increased causing to consider a decrease in its density due to which we can say that whenever there is an endothermic reaction there is a uh, increase in volume and as a result of increase in volume there will be a decrease in density and an increase in concentration a decrease in concentration as well decrease in density and decrease in concentration decrease in density decrease in concentration as well when there is an exothermic reaction in exothermic reaction there will be a decrease in volume but there would be an increase in concentration and increase in density right so in case of the exothermic reaction if we take negative if we are taking the heat is negative again strong electrolytes perform exothermic reaction so when these are dissolved they tend to release the heat energy from their chemical bonding as they release heat energy from the chemical bonding they become more stabilized less reactive their intermolecular forces of interaction are weakened due to which they tend to have their intermolecular gaps decreased as a result of decrease in their intermolecular gaps these intermolecular gaps being decreased will now tend uh, to decrease the volume of the solution as well as the solute due to which the volume of the solution and the solute being decreased will cause the density of the solution to be increased and concentration of the solution to be increased as well so in this case this is how we can uh, you know get the concept of how these non ideal solutions work that here decrease in their a uh, volume sorry increase in a uh, decrease in their volume leads to an increase in their solute in, increase in their concentration as well as increase in their density so exothermic reaction causes a decrease in the volume and increase in the density and concentration now this is a basic consideration in case of non ideal solution and again non ideal solution do not obey raoult's law which means they do not form azeotropic mixtures we are going to discuss this in next class and here uh, solute solvent interaction is always greater than solute solute and solvent solvent interaction in case of non ideal solution because here there is an exothermic or endothermic reaction occurring reaction occurring in order to form a stabilized bond and that stabilized bond would be greater than solute solute and solvent solvent interaction now this is uh, all about today's video hopefully we'll meet in another video